All right. Good morning, Friendship in Old Town. And to all those who are watching, uh, perhaps for the first time, do this coronavirus. I'm uh, Pastor Greg Carter, and now a first-time grandpa. So, hopefully we'll soon be able to meet together in our church, but um, I do want to remind you again of this. On Memorial Day weekend, that's May 24th, we'll be having a drive-in service here at Old Town at 10.30 in the morning. Uh, I'll be out front under the portico, and you can hear the service. Just dial 101.3 FM on your radio dial, and um, so you'll be able to see the service. And you've got to stay in your cars, but at least see you know see your friends and things like that. And I know everybody's missing everybody. Well, let's go to God in prayer. Gracious God, we come before you this morning and we thank you. Lord, we, we especially pray for our, our seniors that uh, have graduated or are graduating, both high school and college, and I guess they even have eighth grade graduations. I don't remember that, but um, just be with them and help them to, in their plans for, for the future. Lord, be with those who are, who are ill, those who are fighting uh, cancers of different kinds and just different things, Lord. There are so many in, in, in the hospital, the, the doctors and the nurses and the cleaning staff and everything. Just be with them and, and guide and direct their thoughts. Keep them safe. Lord, be with us and help us to know what to do. And we, we pray for the day and hopefully it's shortcoming that we'll be able to open our doors again. Now, I don't think, Lord, it's a smart thing if we could only have 10 people to try to have church because we're reaching way more than that through our doing this internet. But Lord, just be with us. Give us wisdom and we'll give you glory and praise all the days that we have life and breath. And it's in your precious name we pray.
chapter 2. And, uh, you know, there's some people who think that the way to please God is you just do certain kinds of religious stuff, religious rituals. Then God's pleased and you're in the in crowd. And that's, that's just not true. And there's others who think the way you please God is through um, rules, regulations. And if you do just do certain things in a certain way, then God will say, you're okay. Sorry, that doesn't please God either. Then there's some people who think that if my bad works are low, and my good works are high, and then it'll balance them out. You know, maybe God grades on a curve. I, I don't know. As long as I do more good than bad. No, that don't work either. The Bible tells us that the only way, the one way that you can please God, and it says it in Hebrews 11, 6, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without faith. Huh. Now, a lot of people think they have faith, but they don't. Do we have faith during this pandemic? Are we running around scared to death? God says in 2 Corinthians 13 and 5, Examine yourself. Yeah, test yourself. I was going to give us a pop quiz this morning, I decided not to. How do you know that you've got the kind of faith that pleases God and ultimately gives access to heaven? Well, James chapter 2 gives us four things that faith is not. This isn't faith. And then it tells us what it is. First off, real faith is not something you say. Verse 14 reads, What good is it, my brothers, if, so, if a man claims to have faith but does no deeds? Can such faith save him? You know, you can talk a good talk, but that doesn't mean you've got faith. There was a Gallup poll that says there are about 50 million people in America who say I'm a Christian. Oh, that's great. One thing about this, not all of those 50 million can back it up with the way they live. Just because a person claims it doesn't mean they have it. You know, you've got to be more than a Professor, you've got to be a possessor. You can write that down and keep it if you want. It wasn't mine, so it's pretty good. See, just because you claim it doesn't mean you have it. And if so, we're, we're so we're so eager for Christians now. If somebody vaguely sounds Christian. Oh, they must be a believer. You know, lots of celebrities have claimed to have faith. But their life doesn't change. Their behavior is the same as it always was. And, and we have dozens, if not hundreds, of well-kept churches in Southern Ohio. And there's little ifu symbols, those Christian fish symbols. They adorn every other car. But when it comes to practicing Christian beliefs, most people are more inclined to worship the golden calf than the Lamb of God. Oh, I just can't wait till things get back to normal. Not me. This so-called normal is what got us into this pandemic in the first place. And not everybody who has a Christian bumper sticker on their car or, or 
They uh, share every Christian thing that they see on Facebook is a Christian. Jesus said, not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, is going to into, enter into heaven. Hmm. And what I said, there's a big difference between being a professor and a possessor. I hope you write that, Daddy. Put that on your refrigerator. See, I, I truly believe that if this nation would really confess their sin to God, would bow down and cry out to God and live a Christian life, we wouldn't be in this pandemic right now. Amen? Can I hear that? Just claiming it is of no value. Second thing, faith is not something, just something that you feel. A lot of people will go to a church service or listen to it here and, and uh, they're emotionally moved. They, they, they felt God's presence. But what are they doing with it? There's a big difference between faith and feeling. Verse 15 and 16 in the second chapter of James says, Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes or daily food. If one of you says to him, Go, I wish you well. Keep warm, be well fed. But does nothing about their physical needs. What good is it? Faith. Church, faith is not just sentimentality. You go out on the street, you see some uh, poor, hungry, cold person. They need clothing, they need shelter, they need food. And you walk up and say, you like that Christian smile? You walk up and say, cheer up. Don't worry, be happy. Feel good, smile. Yeah. And if they don't knock you on the on the on the pavement, <laughs> they should. See, sympathy is saying I'm sorry you hurt. But empathy is I hurt with you. Hurting with them. Are you hurting with those people that are hurting? Compassion says, I'll do anything I can to stop your hurt. Faith is compassion. Many times Jesus was moved with compassion for people. See, faith is getting involved in people's hurts. <laughs> and that's messy. That can be very messy business. You see a need, do something about it. Not just, well, I'll pray for you. No, do something about it. See, if you're a Christian, you're a part of the family of God. And therefore, you have family responsibilities. When you were a little kid, did you have family responsibilities? We would call them chores little things that you did to help the family around the house. Well, we have responsibilities. Are you going through some tough times financially? I know there are. I know there's people watching this who are going through some tough times. But have you ever thought that there are other people right in our own church family who are going through tougher times financially? Are you willing to share? Are you willing to be generous? Well, well I, I, I can't meet everybody's needs. No, no, you can't. But you can meet some. 
And see, and that's why it's so important not to stop giving to your church just because we physically we can't physically be here. We've got to give so we can help others. It may, might not make a difference to everybody, but it makes a difference to those people whose bellies are empty, whose electric is turned off, all of those things. I told this story many years ago. There was a little boy out on the seashore, and there were hundreds of starfish stranded on the beach. You know, when the tide went out, they were stranded. And he picks up a starfish and sails it back out on the ocean. Well, a man came along and says, what are you doing, son? He said, I'm putting the starfish back in the ocean so they won't die. And the old man said, well, there, there's too many. You can't make a difference. Just as the little boy picked up another one and flung it out to the ocean, and he said, it made a difference to that one. You see, great opportunities to serve God are rare. They really are. But small opportunities come every day. Look for those little opportunities. Because faith is not something you say. It's not just something that you feel. It's not just something that you think. See, some people think that Faith is something they want to discuss. They want to debate. They want to argue about. When I meet somebody like that, I won't argue with them. It ain't worth it. You're not going to change your mind anyway. It's not something that they're, that they're going to make a decision on. They're not going to make a commitment about it. James 2 verse 18 says but someone will say well you have faith I have deeds and I will show you my faith by my deeds by what I do <laughs> well you're into faith I'm into deeds so you know let's debate no it's something that you do He's saying that real faith can be expressed in ways that you can actually see. So, how do you know if you've got the kind of faith that pleases God? The Bible's real cut and dry about it. It says, look at your lifestyle. You'll not only know it, but you'll show it. When a person really has Christ in your life, you can see it. James is saying, show me your faith without deeds, and I'll show you my faith by what I do. See, there's a gap between behavior and belief. If I were to go door to door here in, you know, West Portsmouth, and ask people if they would answer. They probably wouldn't answer. But what's important to you? Statistics say nine out of ten would say uh, my family is the most important thing to me. That sounds good. That's great. Then why are there so many parents complaining about having to hold half thing having having to? I think that's a word having to homeschool their children and spending so much time with their kids. Hmm. Maybe that's the question we need to ask. How much time do you spend with your family every day? Individually. How much time do you spend with each child every day? What we say is important to us is really not that important. Uh, you, 
you know, Pastor, my spouse is a Christian. Well, that's great. You ever see them read the Bible? Do they go to church? Or at least want to go to church? Do they pray on a regular basis? Do they tithe their income? That's a tenth of their income. Do they, do they share their faith, tell others about Christ? No, they don't do that. Well, then how do you know they're Christians? Well, they think they are. Just because you think it doesn't make it so. Remember the, the, the song we used to sing as children? You're saved and you know it. Then your life will surely show it. Hmm. Your life will surely show it if you're saved and you know it. See, I don't think somebody as big as Christ can come into your life and not change you. When you're saved, your, your whole life starts taking on new meaning and purpose. And you'll know. And it will show in your life. Faith, real faith, produces a changed life. Now, hang on to your, your seats or your couch or whatever you're sitting on. Number four, real faith is not just something you believe. A lot of people have strong beliefs. You know, I turned on these lights and plugged them in. I believe when I plugged it in, it was going to come on. Well, I plugged it in. Beth came in, plugged her camera in. Guess what? It didn't come on. It wasn't charging. But I believed it would. Huh. So she went back and wiggled it and jiggled it and pushed it in a little deeper and guess what? It came on. It's what you do. A lot of people have strong beliefs about Christ, about God, about the Bible. You know, they've got the doctor down. They have great beliefs. But that's not enough. And James points this out, verse 19. You believe there's one God? Great. But even the demons believe that. And they tremble. See, they haven't made a commitment. They're not going to be in heaven because they haven't really committed. The Bible says the fool says in their heart, there is no God. But look around this world. Look around the room that you're in. You know, you see the lights and you see the furniture and the wall. How many times would you have to throw that up in the air, everything that's in your room that you're sitting in, and have it fall down just the way it is? I used to teach that during the, when the kids were turned 12, confirmation class. Oh. You know, if you look around here, well, how many times did this, this just didn't happen? People made a commitment to building this building. They made a commitment. They went out and bought the lights and the wood, and they made a commitment. The old building was, the old church was right down there on the, on the road. Huh. Look at the birth of a child. Yeah, my gosh. It takes more faith to not believe in a creator than it does to believe in one. The odds of all this just happening, it's ridiculous. says Satan believes in God. Yep. The fool says there's no God. Huh. 
Satan is not an atheist, and, but you're not finding him in heaven because he really doesn't believe you. He doesn't live out what he knows. He's not an atheist. He believes, but he doesn't live it out. The word believe in Greek, Koine Greek, is the word estimo. It means to trust in, to cling to, to rely on. What are you trusting in, clinging to, and relying on right now for the last month or two? What, what is that? Our faith is a commitment. It's more than just head knowledge. I believe in Christ and I'm a Christian because I've committed my life to him. I have chosen to follow him. You know, it's been said that a lot of people are going to miss heaven by about that much from their head to their heart. You've got good head knowledge. Well, they read the Bible all the time. They know it. They read the Bible through and through. Yeah. But guess what? There's no verse in the Bible that says religion is the way to heaven. Jesus didn't say, I've come so that you might have religion. But what did he say? I've come so that you might have life, relationship with him. All right, number five, faith is a commitment. It's something that you demonstrate. Verse 20 says, when, you will, when will you ever learn that believing is useless without doing what God has called you to do? Faith that does not result in deeds is not real faith. And how do you know you've got faith? Look at your lifestyle. And see what kind of actions follow as a result of your faith. How do, I, how do I visibly show that I have faith? Well, the first thing, you know, is accepted Christ, obviously. Then we need to be baptized. Christ himself said, go, make disciples, and baptize them. See, baptism is, a, is publicly identifying who you are and what you are. It's like an advertisement for Jesus Christ. There was a woman I went to a seminary with many, many years ago, and she was Jamaican, and she accepted Christ, and her family didn't like it, but they accepted it, but when she was baptized, they beat her half to death, because it was a, they saw that was a, that she was making that proclamation for the whole world to see that she was a Christian. Now, no, 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 don't say, well, the preacher said that baptism, you know, makes you, no, I did not. Baptism does not make you a Christian. Baptism will not get you into heaven. Baptism is an outward symbol of an inward commitment. You know, you see this ring? Turn it back around. It doesn't make me marry, but it shows that I'm married. If I lost this ring, would I still be married? Might not be alive, but I'd still be married. You know, how can you be a, say that you're a follower of Christ and then not follow him? 
Actions speak louder than words. You've heard that before. Now, I'm not saying you can work your way into heaven. Well, I preached last week. You said we talked about works, 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 works. No, you can't work your way into heaven. Good works are not the root of salvation. They're the fruit of salvation. They don't make you a Christian, but they show you're a Christian. Now, sadly, I know a lot of people who work and do wonderful things. They say it's for Christ. But I wonder. They don't believe anything that's in the Bible. They don't believe that the, in the physical resurrection. They don't believe in the virgin birth. They don't believe, they don't believe, they don't believe. They do great works though. Hmm. There's some people I hope ain't watching this. <laughs> They'll get mad at me. But it's the truth. If the Holy Spirit is touching your heart right now and saying, that's where you are. You do all these works, but you don't even really trust in me. Hmm. See, it's only by trusting Christ can you be saved. Yes, your lifestyle shows if you've trusted Christ. Ephesians 2, 8, verses 8 through 10 says, shows both of these truths together. For it is by God's grace that you have been saved through faith. It's not your own doing, but God's gift. And in our union with Christ Jesus, he has created for us a life of good works which he has already prepared for us to do. Hmm. The basis for my salvation is grace. I can't earn it. I don't deserve it. Yes, if you are a believer, you'll show proof of that salvation in ministry. And if you're a believer, yes, you've got a ministry. God's called you to do something. God's called you to serve. You're, it's been said we are saved to serve. So some of you need to start not just believing in Christ or saying you believe in Christ, but to follow him. That's real faith. As a result, okay, as a result of this message, oh, love me through this, I'm getting personal. What are you going to change? As a result of this message, what are you going to do? You might say, well, I heard it, I thought about it, I felt it, and I believed it. Well, that's wonderful, but that's not enough. What are you going to do about what you heard? What's the, the next step in your Christian life? Maybe you need to, to join a church. Maybe you need to be baptized. Here, email me and let me know. Greg Carter UMC, all one word, Greg Carter UMC at gmail.com. You know, we've got open doors here at Friendship in Old Town. And I would really strongly recommend that you become part of that family that you would develop some habits, find a place to serve, tell other people about your faith, whatever God's calling you to do, and know that he will gift you, gift you to do those things. He's not gonna tell you to do something and then not give you the gifting to do it. But are you willing 
to do it? That's the question. Whatever it is, whatever God's calling you to do, are we willing to do it? Or are we going to make excuses? You're saying, well, God, God, I can't go tell people about my faith. I, I can't talk to people. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Because that's what God has all of Go and make disciples. He didn't say, you, you. No, he said, all of you, go and make disciples. Let's pray together as we close. Heavenly Father, I know there's people watching. Some that will even say the, the right things and think the right things and feel the right things, even believe the right things. But they've never really made a commitment to you. And we pray that today, Right now would be the day. I pray that people who haven't made that commitment would say, I want to follow Christ and believe, not just believe in him, whatever practical step that means, whether it's to be baptized, find a church family, get in the Bible study group, but get some habits that build your likeness, your likeness, Lord, in our life. Help us to be doers of the word, not only hearers. And we pray these things in the precious name of Jesus and ask you to keep us safe until we get to meet again. And amen.
receive this, the benediction. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another that in an accord with Christ Jesus that together you may be one voice glorifying the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And amen. Thank you.